I'm Ed Caffrey, uh, ABS Master Smith here in Great Falls, Montana. For about a year now, I've been working with the folks at Beaumont Metalworks who produce the KMG grinders and their newest accessory for their grinders is the Caffrey Platin. This is a Platin I designed almost 30 years ago. I've been using it daily ever since. And uh, the owner of Beaumont Metalworks stopped by and visited last year and saw this and took a great interest in it. Uh, we're a little bit behind right now on videos, but this was introduced at the Blade Show. And uh, he said it was received very well. I wasn't able to attend. But what we're going to do is kind of go over this platen. We're going to talk about it, its features, why I designed it the way I did, and then we're going to do some future videos or additional videos on setting it up and how to use it properly. Uh, so right now the platen is available with the metal platen face. Probably the biggest improvement that we made during the I guess prototyping of this is this platen is 180 degrees reversible on the vertical plane. So in other words you can pull these two socket head bolts out and this platen will flip 180 so if you wear this side down you've got the other side to use. Something else we're going to be doing in the future is the folks at Beaumont are going to be offering a replacement platen face that is already set up and just all set for you to apply your own glass. Uh, we talked a lot about the glass platen and how we wanted to do that. Uh, one of the things that I did years ago when I built these, and for a few folks, I tried to send them glass platens, and it never failed. However well I tried to package or wrap, glass was always damaged in shipping, and it's just a big, big hassle. And so what I suggested, and the folks at Beaumont accepted, was they're going to offer the ready-made platen faces, which I'll show you in a future video, and they're going to be set up ready for you as an individual to purchase and apply your own glass. And as I said, there'll be more on that in the future. So right now, one of the things you saw me do with this platen, we'll just get into how, it, how it's going to come to you and how it's going to be set up and all that. First things first, uh, let me grab a straight edge. This platen is probably going to come be come to you with out the platen face adjusted correctly. So you can see right now there's a big big gap. If you put a belt on this and run it, it's going to be a train wreck. And what I'm going to show you right now is I'm going to show you how to loosen these two bolts and then move this platen face out to the correct distance so that you have the least amount of problems and I'll explain why as I go. So first uh, what are this? Three sixteenths. Yeah, these are three sixteenths Allen heads. I'm going to lock it up like this for right now. These are slotted, so you loosen them. Obviously, they're going to fall right out. So the first thing you want to do is mount your platen on your grinder on your tooling arm, and I'll talk more about the rotation on the tooling arm in a moment. Tighten it down a little bit. Make sure everything's loose. By the way, as they come, this platen face holder is the name of this part. You see these washers right here. These are absolutely a necessary part of this assembly. What it does is it spaces the platen to the correct distance so it's centered on the wheels. So make sure that if you do pull these socket head bolts out, that you replace these washers. Otherwise, your platen is going to be off when you're using it. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is set it up as you would use it for flat grinding. Uh, this is just an old J-Flex belt. Place it on, tighten your belt. And then what I do is more or less eyeball wear vertical is going to be on the platen. Okay, as you'll notice right now with the platen all the way back, 
You know, you've got to move that platen. The thing that I've seen most guys do is they don't move that platen out far enough. And what you want to do is you want to make it the top and the bottom of the platen are like this. So see where the top wheel and the bottom wheel don't come into contact with the straight edge? And you can vary that slightly. The one thing you never want to see is that. You never ever want to see where the platen is hitting the where platens line up with the wheel. Common knowledge would say that's right. But again, no. Got to bring it out a little bit. And this can be a tricky thing, but you need to just snug these bolts just, I mean, ever so slightly. Just enough to keep the platen from being totally loose. And then I drop that in the water. <laughs> yep, this is going to be a great day of filming. <laughs> but anyway, you can see I've got the distance between the top contact wheel and the straight edge. And again at the bottom. So what you have to be cautious of is when you tighten this down, sometimes it'll move. Nope, it didn't do it that time. But ideally, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for this space right here and this space right here. And now the Y for that. You can use this to flat grind a lot of things. As long as these wheels or the platen is protruding in such a manner that the wheels don't contact your work, either on the top or the bottom, that's where you need it. You will immediately know if these are not in proper position because you're going to wind up pulling your work off and there's just going to be big hollows wherever the top or the bottom wheel contacted. So that's the first one. Got it out of the box. You get the platen set to where it's a usable piece of equipment. Okay, so now let's talk about some features of this platen. The tooling arm, and I'm just going to loosen it up and pull the platen out real quick, is set up with a three-quarter inch hole, obviously a clamp down style. Uh, I used to go through all kinds of hassles of making different cuts, but I found out this is a very easy and ideal way. If you have a milling machine in your shop or a three-quarter inch drill bit, you can do this yourself. It's not really that difficult. But anyway, as it comes, you'll have this tooling arm. You'll have the three-quarter pin that goes in it, and of course you've got full rotation. Okay, what everybody asks me is why did Ed Caffrey choose an inch and a half top wheel and a three-inch bottom wheel? I'm about to show you why. Uh, da, 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 da. And actually I can probably do both with this. This is just a little prototype knife that I was working on. A lot of times I'll make choke-up points on my blades. What I found over the years is this inch and a half wheel at the top of the platen is absolutely ideal for cutting that in. So I've done, not only do I, can I flat grind on this, and I'm just going to put the belt on and actually turn the grinder on and run it at low speed. So one of the things that probably looks odd to you is this guard. I built this guard for this grinder just because I got tired of getting sprayed with grit. So anyway, I'm going to turn this on. A little bit cockeyed, so let me straighten that up. Try to get a vertical on it. There we go. So you want that as vertical as possible. But here, here's where it's all about. I can cut those in, anything from my heaviest grit belts to my finest grit belts. What I found is, and I always teach when I'm building knives, front of handles are small, back of handles are large, that's because of the way the human hand shaped. This three inch wheel at the bottom is the perfect radius for creating the back of the knife handle. So you can just, whether you're working on it or finishing it, and you can bring it in right to the tip on the end of the handle, but you don't go over it. So there are the reasons very quickly as to why I chose these size, sizes of wheels. Uh, obviously, that can vary from person to person, but I can tell you that 95% of the people prefer 
when the cut ends are made with these size wheels. So that's why they're here. What else can we do with this platen? Cut it loose if you choose to do so. Then you have one inch, one inch, inch and a half wheel to grind whatever you choose to grind on. Stop it again, loosen the belt. Then, this is probably one of the most useful things that, without buying a different attachment, is you got a slack belt. So now, grinding on a slack belt, all you have to do is rotate your platen. As we did with the inch and a half wheel, we rotate the platen again. This one I'm going to have to loosen the arm just slightly. Okay, get that in. And there we've got it running on the three inch wheel. So if you choose to do so, then you're in here like this. I have had a couple people ask questions about can I change the size of these wheels. The short answer is yes you can, but I'd advise not because this platen is set up such that it operates at its peak efficiency with these size wheels. So if you guys go goofing around and changing things and it's on you, don't call me, don't call KMG. Okay, there is one other thing, and I'm going to have Tim wander over here and come on the other side of this grinder. And this is just a value added for this video. I want you to look at my tensioning on the ratchet on this KMG TX grinder. Something that most people don't realize or understand. You were always talking about how good or how poor tracking is on our video, or on our grinder, excuse me. Okay, if you notice, I marked this. The reason that I did this, that is the point where the idler wheel is dead nuts level. So in other words, on both the vertical and the horizontal plane, if you can get your grinder tightened like that, your tracking is way, way better. It only really applies to the ratchet system because of other grinders that have the spring. You just simply can't. You don't have any real adjustment just other than as tight as that spring will go. But it's very, very important, again, and a lot of people miss it, setting up their grinders. When you tighten the belt, if this wheel is dead square, I mean, watch the way this tracks now. Barely moving my tracking, and that belt just wherever I want it to go. Very, very precise and very, very fine tracking. If I change that, to where that wheel's lower or higher, one way or the other, the tracking will tend to jump. So that's your value added to this video. Okay, now let's talk about the business end of this. What's gonna happen is the folks at Beaumont already have this on their website. You're gonna be able to go to my website, www.caffreyknives.net, and I'll have a page on there about this platen. I'll also have links uh, to all the important information, not only on to KMG, but also to KMT, Knife Maker Training. Uh, feel free to send me any questions or contact me, and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, we're going to also do a video in the future on applying the glass to the platen. Now, again, I'm just really, really thrilled that KMG is designing or didn't design, we designed, but building these and selling them. I think it's just cool. Uh, gives Tim something to do now behind the camera because <laughs> Tim's back to work. Uh, so again, thanks to the folks at Beaumont Metalworks uh, for producing the Caffrey Platin and hope you guys enjoy it. Until next time, thanks very much.